Every year when I'm growing tomatoes, I always come across the same problem, and that is blossom end rot. If you know, if you've grown tomatoes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a pain in the ass. So I figure in this video, and definitely in this season, I'm gonna be experimenting with four different home products or home remedies that I've scoured through the internet, and a lot of people have been talking about it, but I really wanna know, is it gonna work or is it not gonna work? Let's go. What's going on my plant peoples? I am the ADHD gardener where I use gardening, houseplants, and humor as a form of mental health therapy. And welcome to my tomato garden bed. This garden bed is actually 23 feet long and it's got like 80 tomatoes in here. Now I go through tomatoes a lot because I do a lot of canning and preservation of these tomatoes to last me throughout the entire winter. But every year I come across the same problem and that is blossom end rot. Now when it comes to blossom end rot, there is a reason as to why you're gonna get it. And that has to do with calcium deficiency, but not necessarily calcium deficiency. It's more of like a two part problem. The first reason why you could encounter blossom end rot is because of inconsistent watering. The inconsistent watering is the number one reason why you would probably get some blossom end rot. These tomatoes like consistent watering. Now the second issue that you can have with the blossom end rot and the tomatoes would be the calcium reuptake. Now when it comes to the calcium reuptake problem, that is tied in with the inconsistent watering. Now you can have all the fertilizer you want in the ground, but it's not going to be absorbed into the plant. That could possibly be because of the inconsistent watering. Now I'm hoping that I solved the first problem because I've been implementing some irrigation. Oh, that's gonna be for another video. That is not easy at all. So I put a tomato in every foot according to my drip line. Now that is why I'm using the drip line so I can keep the consistent moisture control on the tomatoes. Now I'm hoping that this is actually gonna fix my inconsistent watering problem, which I'm sure it is, which would lead to the fertilizer, which I'm hoping that would work as a result of the irrigation. Also, when it comes to the inconsistent watering, you, well, I've heard and I've seen it myself before that if you water from the top, you have a chance or a better chance of actually spreading the fungus blight. Now we've, oh my gosh, if you've seen tomatoes and you've grown tomatoes, you know exactly what I'm talking about, the blight. It's a fungus, you get yellowy leaves and it starts to just kill your plant. Now everyone says, oh no, the watering on the top, what about the rain? Well, yes, that's true, but we don't wanna add to the problem because when it rains or you're putting some sort of water on top of this, then you have a chance of spreading the spores all around your tomatoes. So that is another reason why I'm using the irrigation this year. Maybe I can prevent two in one, which is you know, get rid of the blight and also you know, consistent watering, which would be a great thing because that means that my tomatoes can uptake all the calcium or nutrients that they need. Now that is where this experiment is gonna come into play. Now what I do have is actually Tums or an antacid. Now I've heard a lot of people talk about Tums, if you break them down and you put them in your soil, it releases the calcium and then there you go with the calcium, you know, fertilizer. I'm gonna see if it's gonna work. Now the other thing that I have is fertilizer, but that is fertilizer is actually specific for the tomato. Being that the tomato really requires a lot of, you know, calcium or phosphorus or whatever the nutrients that the tomato is going to need, that fertilizer is gonna be it. Now the other thing that I have is Epsom salt. Everyone speaks about Epsom salt, put it in your tomatoes, it's so good for you. I don't know, I'm skeptical because of the calcium and magnesium struggle for the reuptake, but I'll explain that later. Now after the Epsom salt, I, what I do have, which is another questionable one, is actually eggshells. They say that you actually take your eggshells, you crush them up and you put them in your soil. Now that would provide some calcium. I am super skeptical about that. I don't think the eggshells is gonna work, but yet here we are, we are experimenting for you guys. Now I have a reason as to why I think that this is not gonna work, but I'm gonna let you know in the later in the end of the video, but this is what I'm working with. Now the control, actually I don't have it right here, but the control row, I'm gonna have a control one, that is gonna be just regular standard fertilizer, granular fertilizer that you can find inside of your home improvement store or garden center. Nothing out of the ordinary, just regular fertilizer. That was gonna be considered my control, you know, just the standard stuff. So I'm gonna have the four rows, four of these are going to be tested out and let's see which one works the best. I have a bunch of holes in this row that I pre-made earlier in another day. So the only thing I gotta really do is drop in my Rolades. Now for this row specifically, it's just gonna be testing out with antacid. Now, I do not know exactly how well this is going to work. This is why it's an experiment. We've all heard drop a Tums 
or some N acid into your bed. I guess we're gonna find out how well this works over the course of the time. But I'm just gonna be putting in a little bit of powder in each hole over here on this row. I'm using an antacid, but of course this is just a generic one, but you can actually also use a Tums, Rolaids, any form of antacid. Because if you look in the back, at what is the active ingredient? Calcium carbonate. Now, of course, calcium is what we're looking for, so this is why I'm using this. When I use this, I did not use the full tablet. What I did was I broke it down because I wanted to get a little bit of the powder for immediate release, but then I also want a few chunks for a slow release. So that's what I did with the antacid. I also have here my, my heirloom tomato, granular plant food. This is specifically for tomatoes. Now, if you look at the ingredients in the back, it does have a higher percentage of calcium in this one, which is probably why it's more specific to our tomatoes. And it does have a little bit of magnesium in here, but not much. It's primarily mostly calcium. And also, this is actually a granular, which is a slow release as well. Now, for the Rolaids, I actually have bits of powder, but I also have little chunks of the Rolaids in there. So not only is the powder form going to hit directly, but I have the slow release part, you know, the tablet chunks in there as well. So I guess this is going to work out as an experiment after all. Now the eggshells were something else. I really don't think that this is going to work. And there is a good reason as to why this is not going to work when you put it in your garden. Now they say to crush it up and turn it into almost like this, like crushed shells. You could even turn this into powder if you wanted to. That's totally optional. I mean, I was thinking about doing the powder too, but I still think that even in powder form, it is not going to work. And there's a specific reason why it's not going to work. I'll let you guys know later on in the video. Now the Epsom salt is pure magnesium. Now you would say to yourself, man, if this is a calcium problem, why on earth would you be using Epsom salt? That is my question too, and that is why we're gonna experiment with it. I was always thinking that there was gonna be a reuptake problem when it comes to the calcium and magnesium. Which one is gonna win when it comes to reuptake? We shall see. Now I'm dropping some Epsom salt. Now, as I drop the Epsom salt, I've heard some people say drop a tablespoon. I've also heard some people say drop a teaspoon. I guess we're gonna find out. I'm just eyeballing it. The end roll right there, which has nothing as you see, that's just gonna be the control, which is just gonna be the regular fertilizer that I use every year. No added calcium, magnesium, nothing. I have so many tomatoes, I'm gonna be putting them everywhere. But for this specific variety, I have multiple ones. So being that I have a lot to spare, I'm gonna spread them around across the four rows. So they each of the same variety can get a taste of the Rolaids or the calcium, just the tomato, you know what I mean, so on and so forth. So it'll be an equal, you know, playing field for all of the plants. Now I was having issues with my tomatoes in the beginning. They were really running yellow. As you can see here, very veiny, very light colored yellow. Look at this, this is not cool. Now I, I couldn't figure out why this was happening to me. Dad said, you know what? I think you planted your tomatoes too early. Now that is true. When I planted these, it was May 16th and the temperatures during the day were beautiful, but the nighttime temperatures were in the late 40s and that did not really go well with my tomatoes. That is why I see a lot of yellowing on the leaves. But that is okay, being that the weather is warming up, it's starting to develop nice green leaves on top. So I'm not too, you know, I'm not too worried about it. I don't think those eggshells are gonna work, and here's my reasoning. They are not decomposed yet. The reason why we have a compost is to break down all these organic materials so we can use them inside of our garden. If we're breaking up eggshells, and just putting them directly in the soil, it's not broken down yet. So what nutrients is there to absorb? We have to break down the eggshells first before anything gets sucked up. Who in the world thought of this great idea? I have no idea. Now, when it comes to the row with the Tums, I don't see anything particularly wrong with it. I do notice that some of the tomato plants are smaller than others, but I'm also thinking that has to do with the variety. And you know, I think just a variety this what's going down. You see the antacid there that I left? I'm not supposed to, but I did. For the eggshells, it's actually the same thing. I've noticed that some of them are really tall and some of them are really small. So I cannot give the credit 
to the eggshells. I cannot give the credit to the Epsom salt just yet, but I guess we shall see. Now notice again, this is still here, but I'm assuming that this is just old leaves because if you look at the top of the leaves, this is actually pretty green. I still have to wait and watch because uh, I'm just not, I don't know, I'm not feeling this exactly. What I have been doing is actually top watering with liquid fertilizer. Now I'm assuming that the boost that it has been having right now is due to the rain and also the water soluble liquid fertilizer. But I'm assuming that, you know, that is not gonna be enough. What I put into the ground is gonna be a long sustaining, slow release. So I guess we'll just, you know, keep looking out over the time of the season. I hope you enjoyed this video and we really got a good sense as to what we need to do to take care of our tomatoes. I'm hoping to see some good results. I'm actually kind of curious as to which one is actually going to work better. I'm not sure. I hope you have a prediction. Which one do you think is going to work? Which fertilizer is going to work the best for the tomatoes? Let me know down in the comments below because I am really curious to see which one is going to work and which one is not going to work. If you did enjoy this video and you want to show me some love, then don't forget to smash that like button. I appreciate it. Also, if you haven't already, then consider subscribing. I drop a video every week and that's in between. Don't forget about the notification. You can catch me on Facebook and Instagram. I'm on there all the time. You can drop me a message. I post funny memes, a little bit of behind the scenes of my videos. And every now and then a girl has got to vent. So until the next episode, you guys, you and me both are going to be growing our happiness one plant at a time, one day at a time. I'll check y'all later. Peace and love. I know my audio keeps screwing up, people. I know, and I'm totally sorry. The audio the equipment that I would like is kind of not cheap. All right, not cheap. And it's not in my budget right now. So sorry, my bad. I'm working on it, I promise, I'm working on it.